In the last video, we ran a simple launch simulation using the Estes Alpha and the EA3 motor. Now we want to take a look at what the trajectory of this rocket looks like. And we do that in the 2D flight profile. And that's this button up here on the top. Before we can click on it, we must select a simulation from the list. Right now we only have one simulation, so we'll just select it. And then we'll click on the launch button. And it's going to run a, a flight profile all over again. And it's also loading a movie of the rocket's flight. And this is what it will look like here. And we can click on this Start Animation Playback button and we'll see the rocket take off with a trail of smoke behind it. These green dots are the trajectory of the rocket. It's laying one dot down every second in the flight. When you're done launching the movie, you can go ahead and click on the cancel button. Up here on the top of the screen, Let's go ahead and adjust the size of our columns so we can see more information in the summary window. Now we can see the velocity of deployment and the altitude at deployment. That first simulation was rather boring because we didn't have any wind in the simulation. So let's go ahead and change that. And we're going to do that by doing the prepare for launch. And then we're going to go to the Launch Conditions tab on the top. And we can change the wind speed. Right now we're at 0 to 2 miles an hour. Let's just change it to 8 to 14 miles per hour. Let's also turn off the thermals. We're going to do that by selecting No Thermals. And let's change the launch angle using this selector screen right here. It's kind of like a dial indicator and you just grab it with your mouse and just change it to any launch angle you want. You can also type in a number using the keyboard. This button down here tells us we're going to go right to the flight profile without having to select it from the main screen. And this will save us some time. So let's go ahead and click on that. Roxim runs the simulation. And when it's done, he'll start loading the launch movie. And this may take some time depending on the complexity of your flight and the processor speed of your computer. So now let's we see that we have the rocket that's angled a little bit more than before and we click on the start playback. We'll see that it's now going downrange a bit. These arrows that are trailing the rocket are actually the force vectors that are occurring on the rocket. And we can turn those off or on in the flight preferences right here. Here's the vector overlays tab. And if you want to turn them off, select none. Under the flight screen, we can select the background image that we saw behind the rocket. Now, this background image has nothing to do with the flight of the rocket. It's just for decoration. But there are there are several images that come with Roxim and you can go to the background images folder and select some to see how they'll look be behind your rocket. Then clicking OK, Roxim is redrawing the flight sequence. So now we have our new background image. And basically it's the same flight but on a bif different background. We can also see down here at the bottom, as the rocket takes off, there's a trail of smoke, and the smoke is drifting with the wind. Now we can add, the, add more smoke, or change the color of smoke, also by the preferences. And you'll see there's a tab called Smoke Effects. And right now, it's putting down a puff of smoke every 16 feet. If you want more smoke, you can make the number smaller, and I'll make it 5 feet. And 
the expansion time is how long it takes from the smoke from, from to make a small circle to a big circle. And I'm going to change that to 5 seconds. And the smoke lifespan, I'll make it 6 seconds. So after 6 seconds, the smoke just disappears. And when we click OK, RockSim is going to ask us if we want to run a new simulation. And go ahead and say yes. And now when we run a simulation, we'll see a lot more smoke. If we want to see the rocket go higher on the screen, we'll go back to the preferences and click this box that says allow scrolling of the range axis. So now if the rocket goes off the screen, we can use this scroll bar here on the bottom to watch it come down and to see where it lands. Okay, now we're seeing down here that it's landing 454 feet downrange. And there are numbers along here on the bottom. And depending on the background image behind the rocket, it can be hard to see or easy to see. So you can go ahead back into the preferences, click on the rulers tab, and you can change the color and the font. And I'll make this a nice dark color, so I'll just make it black. And the font, just click on the button, and you can select which font you want for the background. I'm just going to select Arial since it's a common. And here you can select the size of the font. See now our numbers here on the bottom are easier to see.